After my most successful hunting season ever, including getting this nil guy, I'm throwing away the gold tip airstrikes. Why you ask? Stick around and you'll find out. Hey, what's going on champions? Hunting season's upon us again. How bloody good is that? Last year I shot these gold tip airstrikes. Had a lot of success. I got the nil guy that's on the table in front of me. I got an elk out in Wyoming, three whitetail here in North Carolina. And then I went to Australia a couple of months ago and got a bunch of pigs down there. So you'd ask, with all that success, why would you go to something else, Will? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, the integrity. Two, the color and the finish. And three, general curiosity. That all sounds a bit ambiguous and a bit broad, so let's dig into it. So of the six airstrikes I've built last year, I had two of them fail in the field. This one on the Neil guy that's on the table in front of me, and you can go watch that hunt, I'll link it up above. Then I had another situation down in Australia recently where I had an arrow break on a pig and I couldn't tell whether or not it happened as the pig rolled over in the mud just after the shot or whether or not uh, the arrow just broke under, under the stress of the shot itself and, and wasn't impacted by the ground. So it gave me a little bit of uh, concern that perhaps these airstrikes uh, weren't up to the task. Would any other arrow in the 5 mil uh, range that's on the market uh, survive something like that? Uh, probably not. And the only way to find out is to try something else. The second reason is the colour and the finish. Now that might seem a little superficial, particularly when neither of those two things really matter when it comes to killing an animal. But hear me out. If you watch any of my hunts that I've posted from last year, these arrows do an excellent job of blending in with the neutral colors on the ground. The browns, greens, and the grays of the forest floor or out the open floodplains. I lost three arrows in Australia. I couldn't find them. They blended in that well. Um, the other part is that the finish is super slick. So the Dynatech uh, slick system, I can't remember the exact name, doesn't allow the blood to collect on the arrow shaft that well. It can be a little concerning because you don't know how good your shot is and you have to wait uh, as you should uh, if you don't get a good blood trail and, and you don't know where the animal's gone down. And the third reason is curiosity. I remember as a kid pulling apart the family stereo system only for my dad to come in and lose his shit. But I managed to get it back together and it worked fine. A uh, bit of a confession here, dad. There was one screw left over, but it still worked, mate. So. I figured, why not just try something else? There's a bloke on the West Coast that preaches always be tinkering or hashtag ABT. I subscribe to that. So why not take the opportunity when my six arrows are no longer, I'll try something else out. So what is it? Well, let's go and have a look. The Victory Rip TKOs. They do come with their own collared type insert system, whether it's called a half out or something like that, I don't care. I chose not to use those. I do like having a little bit of extra integrity up front. So those arrows that I shot last year, they were really good with that ethics archery um, half out system. So I'm gonna use their universal footers this year. They go over the end, slide on nice. I don't have to do any of the sanding that I did last year because of the extra thickness on the airstrikes. They just slide over, which is really nice. And the insert I'm using is the HIT system from Easton. The brass comes at 75 grains. I'll snap off the back section to get it to 50. And then with the broadhead I'm using, I'm sticking with the Oscut three blades. What a bloody ripper uh, broadhead this is. Nothing but praise for these guys. Excellent job, excellent blood trails. No reason to go away. So between the 100 grains there, the 40 with the collar, and the 50, I've got 190 grains up front. I will be using the Stealth Max veins again. Really liked how those fly in a four vein configuration with those broadheads. I'm not using a wrap this year because I still want to get to about that 15% FOC and because I'm using the lighted knocks at 23 grains from Nocturnal, I need to drop a little bit extra out the back. So all up, this arrow is going to come in at 495 grains with the FOC calculated at 14.7%. But anyway, tell me what you think. Is this a good arrow? Do you think I'm just crazy going away from something that worked? Tell me what you're shooting in the comments. 
and I hit 500 subs this week. Pretty excited by that. I appreciate everyone that supported me so far. And if you haven't subscribed, why the bloody hell not? Get onto it. I'll build this arrow, I'll film it so you can see the whole process and we'll see you on that video.